Ranger Dave here at Shenandoah National Park in our South River picnic ground, taking in the beautiful views that Shenandoah has to offer. Now you, probably just like me, love to come to the park to have your own unique experience. But did you know a lot of our adventures here in the park wouldn't even be possible if it weren't for the help of the Civilian Conservation Corps, also called the CCC. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about the work that they've done in the park to help make Shenandoah what we know today. Back in the 1930s, during the Great Depression, President Roosevelt created the Civilian Conservation Corps under the New Deal program. The premise of this program was to offer young men an opportunity to have unemployment relief, getting $30 a month. Now that's a lot of money back then, of course. You see, there wasn't many jobs and economic opportunities, so they had the ability to come up here and do simple labor tasks to bring money back home for their families. It was quite an honorable experience. So boys aged 18 to 25 signed up to work six month terms for programs all across the United States, one of which was here in Shenandoah. Now these boys, when they came to the park, had to stay somewhere. Well, where would they stay? If it were me, I'd go to one of the lodges, but there was nothing here in the park. So they decided to camp. It was a big deal because there's about 200 boys per camp here. And we had over 12 camps in and around the park that we know today. And a lot of those camps were built with old World War I tents and eventually built buildings out there. Camp life wasn't as fun as you think it would be. The United States Army actually helped set up the initial camps here at Skyland and Big Meadows. Well, you say, why wasn't it fun? Because just like the Army, they had to wake up, go to work, come back, get cleaned up, and then they could go to dinner and have their recreation activities. But it was still a unique opportunity for them. Some of the camps that we know like I'd mentioned, was Big Meadows, Skyland, Pinnacles, Front Royal, Baldface, and even down in the grottos. There was camps all throughout the park, each offering unique teaching lessons for these boys. You see, when they came to the park, these simple labor tasks weren't just, hey, make a trail. They also learned trades. They got high school degrees, and some of them even prepared them for later on in life. Now, some of the trades that they learned, including operating sawmills and lumber yards, blacksmithing, building hinges for doors, sign making, so that you could know where you're at in the park. And also, they even learned sciences like botany and plant nurseries, so that we could have the beautiful trees that they planted here in the park. Now, these tools that they used with these trades, well, I have an opportunity to talk to you about them. One of my most dangerous ones, but favorite ones, is the crosscut saw. A unique saw that they used to help cut down some of the old chestnut trees that were affected by the chestnut blight. A unique thing about the crosscut saw is that the blades are actually in a V pattern, crossing. So it's like two knife edges going through the tree so that it's easier to chop down. Now, it wasn't just a single person crosscut. On the bigger trees, they had these, a two person crosscut saw. Now, this one doesn't have the handles here, but it is a quite a big saw, and you could chop down quite a big tree. How long do you think it took them? They didn't get chainsaws. It was quite a task to help clear these trees down for buildings and picnic tables that we know today. Another tool that you probably refer to and know a lot is the pickaxe, just like this one. Now, what would you think this is used for? It's obvious if you think it's for helping make trails or breaking up rocks along the road. They would use this to crush and uproot all those rocks. It's quite a cool tool. Another more common one that they actually used a lot more of that we have a modern version of is the pickmatic. This one is a cuttermatic. 
Now it is a little red because it's a brand new one, roughly. But the same design was used back then as it is today, with the cutter edge to help cut those roots, because the pickaxe can't really cut the roots that well. And of course, the Adaze digger end that would help you dig up that root or that big heavy rock. Imagine swinging this for eight hours a day. You get pretty tired pretty fast, but they put in the work. And the last tool I have here to talk to you about is a brush hook. Now, another newer version, but very similar in design with a blade edge on the front that you could swing to help clear trails and shrubberies around trees, to help move trails, get rid of bushes, and help clear the way for the guys coming behind them. These tools were used throughout all the camps, whether it was setting up the camp, working on the road, the rock walls, or any of the other projects here in Shenandoah. The boys worked tirelessly and hard to help create Shenandoah for us. And we can visit some of their projects to this day. So follow me and we'll go see one that they worked on. You're joining me here now at Pocosin Cabin, one of the projects completed by the boys of the Civilian Conservation Corps. And it's a pretty cool one with its square cut logs and stone mason stone fireplace that was built by them by hand, along with the original shingled roof that's kind of been modernized a little bit so that you can rent out this cabin today even. But building buildings wasn't their only job that they did here. There was a plethora of work that they did all throughout the park to help give us that wonderful experience that we now have. Along Skyline Drive, there's the stone gutters that they laid the stone to make sure the rainwater would wash away. And also, the stone walls that help keep us safe while we're driving along. Now the stone is still original, but it's been modified slightly for modern safety standards because we don't want you to drive off the edge. But if you're keeping a keen eye out and you see a stone wall that's a little lower than all the others, that could be original work done by the CCC still here today, along with this cabin. Now, it wasn't just the stone walls and gutters that they built along the drive. They also helped build up the earth to build the beautiful overlooks that we get to pull off and then take in that beautiful mountain view. like the mountain laurel, the sumac, and the Virginia creeper that they planted all throughout the park. Over 360 acres they seeded. Now that's a lot if you ask me, because have you ever planted a tree? I know I haven't, but imagine just moving one tree from a nursery all the way in the North District of Front Royal down to Limberlost Trail to have that mountain laurel right there. You'd have to take the tree, dig it up, transport it on a truck, and then bury it. That's a big task for a group, and that's just one tree. They planted almost 150,000 trees here and shrubbery. That was quite an arduous task that they worked on. But it wasn't just trees along the overlooks. It was also the stone and the logs that they planted in place and built up so that they would never wash out because the road was built but they had to reinforce to make sure we didn't have any rock slides or fallouts of the road. But moving along to other projects that the CCC did, they worked hard to build the picnic grounds like we were at earlier. Dickey Ridge picnic area, elk wallow, 
Pinnacles, Big Meadows, and of course, the South River picnic area. Those were all built just for us to enjoy a beautiful picnic. But when I say built, they didn't just cut down a tree, build a picnic table, and clear a lot. No, they designed the picnic areas specifically so you had the perfect shade right next to your picnic table. Spaced out so that you could take in the views all around you, especially at Pinnacles. Quite a beautiful experience that we get to have because of their hard work. And after that picnic, you could hike one of our mini trails here in the park, some of which were worked on by the Civilian Conservation Corps. They helped move the trails, like the Appalachian Trail, to prepare room for the Skyline Drive to make its way across the Shenandoah Mountains. Experiencing these trails are unique to every single one here. Whether you're going up to Hawksville Mountain, our highest peak in the park, or going down the historic Stony Man Trail, or even if it's just to a waterfall like Rose River, Dark Hollow, White Oak, and the many others we have here. Hiking in the park can be a unique experience to everybody. But all of our experiences here in the park boil back down to the Civilian Conservation Corps. Hiking the trails, staying at a cabin like Pocosin right here, grabbing your buddies for a backcountry camping trip, or even just sitting down at the picnic tables and having the classic park picnic. All of our experiences here in Shenandoah are unique to everyone. And we need to learn a little bit about where we came from, how the park was created, and where we will go in the future. Because when I'm hiking a trail, I love to think about how everyone has passed through the same spot that I've been on and their own unique experience they get to have. It's a fun time being here in Shenandoah. So the next time you visit Shenandoah, think of how unique and different your experience would be without the hard work of the boys of the Civilian Conservation Corps. Thank you.